Let us pray. O gracious and exalted one, even as we bow in prayer, we magnify your holy name for all your gifts day by day and from age to age. When we consider our creatureliness, we certainly can list our failings and offenses in relation to you and others, and never be able to remember all of these. Forgive us, though, of all our sin. Hear us now, Lord, as we come before you in a private time of confession through a prayer of silence. As the only source of true pardon, restore us to a repaired and empowered life for faithfully serving among all your people, in the way and the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, let us hear and share with gladness the blessed news of the gospel. from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 1, and then verses 4 through 11. Now these are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the peoples whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken. He took these into exile from Jerusalem all the way to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Go and build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not, do not decrease. But seek the well-being of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray the Lord God on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. For it is a lie, and they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed, will I then visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your well-being and not for harm, plans to give you a future with a hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the current historical period of the COVID-19 virus and economic crises, for three Sundays, if you count today, we've explored if, when, and how we move beyond the challenges and losses that we've experienced, we might do well not to leave behind three elements of who we are. So two Sundays ago, we explored not leaving behind our integrity, 
Last Sunday, we explored not leaving behind our brokenness. And this week, we'll explore not leaving behind our well-being. You may logically ask, why would anyone in her or his right mind leave behind well-being? Perhaps most people would not do that when carefully thinking, but when experiencing what develops, people do forget well-being as a worthy value. This is no exact parallel to COVID-19, but 580 years before the time of Jesus, former residents of Jerusalem are under house arrest in the city of Babylon to where they were deported. They strongly desire to go home. You and I have recently been under uh, stay-at-home recommendations. It's not been house arrest by any stretch of the imagination, and it certainly has not been hundreds of miles distance from our home region. Nor, of course, have we been forcibly brought here or where we are now. Yet a virus has forced its way into our midst and caused us to heed stay-at-home recommendations when we would prefer to travel out. One of the mantras has been stay at home now as long as we need so we can gather together again sooner rather than later. The prophet Jeremiah was left behind and he was still living in Jerusalem. He writes this letter to the former Jerusalemites now under that house arrest in Babylon after Jeremiah hears that the exiles over there are chomping at the bit to return home. They are ready to get going again. Yet the word of the Lord speaks to Jeremiah, telling him to write to them and say, unpack your luggage where you are, plant gardens, hang artwork and photos on the walls of your houses, crank up educational curriculum for children and youth, plan to stay a while, invest yourselves with each other and in the well-being of the whole city. Learn what you can as you invest yourself where you are because you are not going to see Jerusalem normal for quite a while. Jeremiah hears from God and he relays God's message to those former Jerusalemites now in Babylon he relays to them that change happens and a rush to leave change behind will gain them nothing. Don't we know this to be true in our time and place when the invasion has come from a virus not visible to the naked eye? The virus invasion has taken casualties, resulted in stay home orders, taken a serious toll on the economy and introduced uncertainty about the future. All of this leaving us at a loss. Yet well-being in any new normal we are learning is based in the gifts God has given and called on people to share. Gifts such as caring, sacrifice, service, respect, empathy, compassion, giving, intelligence, broadly based cooperative efforts, even nationally and globally. To invest in well-being for family, friends, acquaintances, and strangers, to invest in a sense of others' inherent dignity and worth, is essential. Jeremiah reminds the former Jerusalemites that God is with them in their new normal right where they are with the gifts of community and well-being they need. Their well-being 
is not a matter of history or their personal past, as if well-being had been left behind in the ruins of Jerusalem. God's well-being is possible, God says, right where they are now. But here is another element. If those under new living conditions in Babylon fail to seek the well-being of all in Babylon, they will be ill-equipped to seek well-being in some future chapter of their lives, including when they return to Jerusalem someday or when their descendants return. If it's their descendants, it will be because they didn't model seeking well-being for their descendants. It is altogether appropriate and important to be most cautious. But if we are obsessive in our worry about dying or foreigners or those different from ourselves or losing what's valuable to us, we will almost always be unable to live fully as God desires and surely we will not be seeking the well-being of folks wherever we are. It has been said people have a failure of nerve because they have no nerve of failure. That was Leonard Sweet uh, in his book, Summoned to Lead. We find strength and learning from our failures and our losses and our heartbreaks. That's never to imply we want more failure, loss, and heartbreak. It is to say clearly that remembering how we feel loss and vulnerability opens us for sharing life by the same grace from God which has brought us thus far. If we seek the well-being of all who are where we are, we will be stewards of a community that's learning in God's grace and blessed by God's grace in ways that we may not have dreamed possible. Because usually we do not associate heartbreak, grief, vulnerability, and, and arduous survival challenges, we do not ordinarily associate these with grace. We like grace, but heartbreak, grief, vulnerability, and arduous survival challenges, we do not like so much. As God communicated with those of old, God beckons us also to discover in our difficult times the nerve of failure which will give us sensitivity, wisdom, and risk willingness to seek and invest in the well-being of all. And when the next chapter begins, we shall bring with us the learnings of the well-being which grew in us and around us until this present time. As one example beyond COVID-19, we observe Memorial Day this weekend. Not with the perspective of, I'm glad others gave their lives in their time, so I don't have to do that now. Oh no. We observe Memorial Day with the perspective, thank God others gave their lives in their time in defense of wide sacred democracy because they teach me and us that it's possible for us to do the same every day and hopefully not with weapons. We have God to thank, do we not? We shall bring with us to subsequent new challenges and new norms, the nerve of failure and vulnerability which do not defeat us because we will have learned 
in God's care and guidance, the shared life and cooperative habits of seeking well-being in every present. Whatever new challenges and new normals are being birthed in our midst. Friends, let us not leave behind the learning of pursuing well-being in this time so that we shall be competently equipped attitudinally for next chapters as God is faithful to equip and guide us. Let us never leave behind the well-being God desires. All honor and praise be to God. Let us once again join together in prayer. O glorious and caring one, we honor you for your mysteries on earth which are small and large, simple and complex, for gurgling brooks and crashing waves, for wind-blown sands and quiet meadows, 
for laughter, service, study, sacrifice, and healthy relationships with other persons, in whose company we experience learning, encouragement, maturity, and even delight. We are grateful for all those, known and unknown to us, who have gone before us and left something of themselves as a legacy of compassion, trust, faith, knowledge, and wisdom. On this Memorial Day weekend, we particularly remember with deep gratitude the mortal life sacrificed by those who have served our nation and fellow citizens courageously and in defense of democracy. Great God of the vast universe and of love so dear, together we celebrate the accomplishments of all who have completed a chapter of accomplishment in their education journeys from pre-kindergarten graduates to doctoral graduates, whether generalists or specialists, among these Luna Curtis and Cruz Garcia, as you prepare them each for the next segment of life's journey, plant in their memory both inspiration and encouragement from those that we have, who have loved them and who have supported them throughout the years. Grant that we may send them forth with all our love, all our reverence, and all of our perseverance, and all of our support, God. May they and we hold each other and your whole world in our prayers and ministry, expecting the Spirit of Christ to continually heal, empower, humble, and embolden one and all. O oh, our strength and sure defense, anoint with healing all who are afflicted, downcast, struggling, and despondent. Support the oppressed, deliver the tempted, sustain the ill and injured, empower each one beyond tears of bereavement, and daily be to every person a holy shield and guide. Now, again, as we pray as Jesus taught us together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you join us now in singing hymn number 340, This Is My Song.
success. May you go forward in peace from wherever you may be and with health and well-being and love on your side. And may we go forth into this world and care for others as we would care for ourselves, knowing that we are all interconnected in love with one another and in the eyes of God. And may we do so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.